Do you have what it takes to get into cybersecurity in 2026? I've been working in cybersecurity for a little over two years now, and I'll be real honest with you, cybersecurity is hard. Not that it's impossible to succeed or even gate kept, it's just hard to get in. And today, I wanna give you key characteristics, traits, skills, and a mindset you must have to succeed in this field. Not from what the hackers look like in the movies or what they tell you on TikTok, but the real day in and day out version of what it looks like to work in this field. If you're new here, my name is Ari and I make videos on cybersecurity, tech, and just lifestyle in general. If that's something that interests you, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Hit the like button. Don't forget to leave a comment and also turn on those post notifications so anytime I post a video, you are notified. There are hundreds of cybersecurity jobs posted weekly. There are even thousands of roadmaps, boot camps, and courses online. But the truth is, cybersecurity is not entry level, which makes it hard to even land a job in this field with no experience. And that's due to a number of reasons. And number one being that the hiring system is completely broken. There are no realistic job requirements. You want someone to be a junior cybersecurity analyst or an entry level cybersecurity analyst, but you want them to have three years of experience, have five tools that they never heard of, and have an advanced level certification. What? Okay, in my opinion, it's better to take advantage and take a chance on someone that is about 80 to 90% there already. Someone who's hungry and willing to learn. And enough of me venting, there is a lot to learn. And that's why most people start in cybersecurity by not starting in cybersecurity, which means they usually start in more of an entry level role like help desk or IT support and they work their way up. And help desk gives you what cybersecurity actually requires. Understanding how systems work, understanding how to troubleshoot under pressure, understanding and learning the networks within your system, and learning users, which start actors loved in a whole different category. But it's more important that it gives you context. Building a foundation, especially in an entry level role like IT support, will take you so far along the way in cybersecurity just because it gives you that foundation. It teaches you the, the basic things. And I honestly started in help desk as well. I was in help desk for about a year and a half before I even moved over to the cybersecurity role, which just shows you that you don't always have to enter in right then and there. You just use it as a stepping stone to get you where you want to be. But before you even think about getting into cyber or what cybersecurity things you need to do, you first need to understand the tools, the techniques, security concepts. You should be able to answer questions like, how do you secure a laptop in an organization? How do you detect and remediate alerts? How do you even access certain things? who should have access to certain things and why, and how do you even secure email, web traffic, network traffic, basic foundations to security concepts. If you enter into cybersecurity without this foundation, everything just becomes a blur and you truly can't learn concepts without foundation. So you need to understand these security concepts before you even want to even enter into a security role. When people think about cybersecurity or I tell them I work in cybersecurity, the first thing they ask or say, oh, you're like those people that hack in the movies. And while that's only one part or one role within cybersecurity, which we would call a pen tester or a red teamer, that's what most people do once they're deep into their career. That's usually not the first job you get in cybersecurity. The first role you would typically get in cybersecurity would be either a SOC analyst or a junior SOC analyst. And this would be on the blue team or what some people will call the defensive side of security. And this is where you're typically monitoring alerts, detecting, responding, triaging, and remediating these alerts and threats that come in from the outside. So you want to defend your organization and defend and lock down your endpoints and devices against these threats that are trying to attack the systems. And I think this is a good way to 
start your career just because in order to be able to be offensive you first have to know how to defend against those offenses that's just my opinion I personally think that is a good way to enter into your cybersecurity career by joining in on the defensive side or the blue team side however depending on your organization a SOC analyst may get hundreds maybe even thousands depending on what's going on that day of alerts tickets false positives phishing emails user at risk alerts compromise alerts and sometimes even detections you can't fully investigate if you're also on a site that has a 24 7 on call you may also encounter alerts or pager duties within the middle of the night at two or three o'clock in the morning and the hard truth about that is it can lead to burnout. And will it change in 2026? Absolutely not. With the assistance of AI and hackers just trying to find new ways to be more sophisticated, these attacks are everywhere and threat actors are only getting smarter. So phishing emails can even look like they're legitimate. They can come from what looks like an expected person that you're used to having business communication with, or they might have been someone that compromised their email, so it is their email, they just got compromised. Or there's an impersonation scam where they want to look like Betty Jane, except they add a one or a two or some form of carrier to, character to the end of that email. So now the end user isn't that prone to paying attention because they're used to having conversations with Betty and then they fall victim for this phishing scam. So you see so much on a day to day in this role that even working in the sock can still be a lot sometimes. And you have to be able to be on your toes, be quick, be able to ask questions and not really be scared to take every situation and every incident as a learning lesson. All right, enough of me saying how cybersecurity is hard. Here are some traits and characteristics you will need to survive and thrive within cybersecurity. Number one, all time is curiosity. If you see something in the news and immediately go, oh, I wonder how they pulled this off. Like, for example, a China, a China hacker group exploited or hacked a specific government um, file or something like that and you're curious and intrigued to know how did they pull that off you go into some research and figure out what tools did they use did they create something from scratch did they use something that was already pre-made this is what curiosity looks like and cybersecurity requires that self curiosity the passion to learn without really being able to expect anything in return like for example if you were given this research on your job from your manager, you're going to expect something out of return from that actual task. Whereas if this is your own curiosity, you're just doing it because you want to and you're curious on the end result. So you want to make sure that you're curious in this field, especially within cybersecurity. It'll go a long way and you have to be curious to stay on top of certain threats. The second trait I would say is the drive to learn new skills. Being able to pick up new skills, learn new skills, that makes you more effective in the modern security environment. And depending on your goals, I would even say pick up a coding language. It's important to understand how to be able to read code and how to look for certain things. Not that you will be coding specifically in a security role, but you want to be able to know how to read that code. You also want to understand certain technicals within cybersecurity, understanding different solutions like DevSecOps solutions or cloud solutions or endpoint detection solutions. And being able to identify these solutions will carry you a long way within cybersecurity. And you also want to understand how systems interact and communicate. Understanding these basic skills can take you far along in cybersecurity just with curiosity and learning new skills all in itself trait number three is the grind the grind the grind the grind especially if you're a beginner and you have no experience the only way to get experience 
is to go for the grind. The grind doesn't last long, but especially if you're trying to get in, you're going to have to grind. You're going to have to put some time in. And the grind can be just by using tools like Try Hack Me, Hack the Box, certifications, or even beginner-friendly CTFs like Over the Wire. You want to be able to pick up these concepts, pick up these techniques, and be able to showcase what you can do off of what you know. And a little time goes a long way. If you only have 30 minutes, that's all you have, but you spend time on that skill perfecting that skill. Even if it's 30 minutes to two hours a day of consistent study, you're still putting towards that time. And if you feel like you don't have enough time, then you probably need to evaluate how bad you want to get into cybersecurity because it will take time and it will take grind in the beginning. Trait number four, and the most important to me, is be humble. Don't be a know-it-all. In cybersecurity, you cannot know everything. This field is way too big. It's constantly changing way too fast. And even someone like a senior analyst or someone that's in a senior role can't even know everything. People who fail in cybersecurity aren't the ones who are beginners. It's the ones that refuse to ask questions. You have to be comfortable with saying, I don't know. Can you explain that? Um, can you can you give me more information on this? I, I'm not really understanding this concept. Can you show me how you did that? Like humility keeps you teachable. And I think people kind of downplay this particular area within cybersecurity because you feel like you have to know everything, but you can't know everything. In my opinion, asking questions and not being afraid to ask keeps you collaborative. It makes you a, more of a team player and it keeps you from making dangerous assumptions if you don't know something especially with like an incident it doesn't hurt to ask because it can take something that's really serious to the extreme if you just assume that oh i know it's nothing it's a false positive and then it really is something that's malicious and could compromise a whole organization so i'm gonna tell you right now you better leave that ego at the door because we ain't have any. This fail will humble you real quick any day. So ain't no egos over here. So now that I have given you the breakdown on why cybersecurity is hard and a few traits of cybersecurity and how to be successful in cybersecurity, now I want to give you some key steps on how to prepare for a career in cybersecurity. And the first thing is getting some hands-on experience. Beginners get overwhelmed with reading a whole lot of stuff, especially with certifications, but hands-on challenges are real and honestly are better to understand in my opinion. I personally recommend starting with those beginner rooms and try Hack Me and Hack the Box, as well as even going over to Over the Wire and getting your hands wet with some Linux um, syntax as well. Also, if you're into getting certifications and you want to kind of brush up your skills. Those CompTIA entry-level certifications, I personally recommend watching the Professor Messers playlist. He does a great job of breaking out any form of security concepts you may not understand, and that's whether you're studying for those certifications or not. He just is the guy to go to for anything, really, when it comes to entry-level certifications and entry-level security concepts. When I first transitioned from help desk to cybersecurity, I knew a little bit of Python, a little bit of PowerShell, and a little bit of SQL, but I really didn't know how to use it. So I think learning a coding language like PowerShell, Python, or SQL can take your cybersecurity career from a technical standpoint to the next level. Start with using languages and tools to support your day-to-day -day as a SOC analyst and how to use it. So in 2026, I encourage you to pick up a programming language or a coding language, not for really anything specific or not because you will be coding within this field, but just to be able to know how to utilize it. And especially from a SOC perspective and a security engineer perspective, PowerShell is a good tool for learning how to do automation and endpoint analysis. KQL and SQL are pretty much your go-to when it comes to analyzing data. Especially from the Microsoft Azure standpoint, you will see KQL, especially if you're doing things like threat hunting and looking through logs. 
it can take you a long way to be able to create alerts even. Threat detection is one of the main things you will eventually get into in cybersecurity when it comes to SOC analysts, especially from the blue team side. So KQL and SQL is a language I personally would recommend that you get into learning just to be able to walk in the door on your cybersecurity career ready. And last but not least, Python is a good tool for scripting. It's beginner friendly, it's easy to learn, and it's quick tooling. Like you can pick it up really fast. It allows you to be able to get those key concepts in. And it can help you with things when it comes to CTFs as well for picking up quick scripts to plow through those CTFs. Again, if your company ends up using a Microsoft shop or anything as your security stack, that KQL is a powerhouse and it is good for log analysis, detections, investigations, threat hunting, dashboards, and you will be able to do so much, so much faster with KQL. You can build your own hunting queries. You can even make, a, make alerts based off of your queries. You can detect patterns, anomalies, spot account compromises. You can do so much with all of these programming language that it will make you dangerous in a real good way. You also want to take the technical and the theoretical knowledge that you learned from the previous areas and use it and make your own lab. So home lab is very important because it allows you to build projects based on what you want to do in certain environments that you want to learn. If you're into maybe becoming a SOC analyst, you want to learn how to use Splunk because a lot of environments and a lot of companies use Spunk as their sim and it'll allow you to get that hands-on experience so when you are in that interview you can say oh I've used Spunk to detect and triage or I've used Spunk to do log analysis or whatever the case may be even build rules because then that can make you a good candidate for an engineer role so recruiters love to see home labs because it proves passion and hands-on capability that puts you a far long step than everybody else that's trying to interview and get the job as well. All right, so after I give you all the spill, all the information, the real question is, do you have what it takes to get into cybersecurity in 2026? And the truth is, it's not the version that you see online or the how to get into cybersecurity and make six figures in six months, but do you truly have the grind, the passion, and the gut to be able to dig your way into a field that is not entry level friendly. And if you do, cybersecurity needs you because we need people that will be curious, not afraid to grind, love the complexity, and stay constant with the evolution of threats. So if you decide to walk this path, I promise you it will change your life. I hope this video was helpful. And hopefully the traits and advice that I gave you will take you a long way. And congratulations in advance for getting into cybersecurity in 2026.